What's up guys, welcome to the video. Uh, I have uh, my team with me today, the distinct few. Hello. Uh, hi. Hello. And uh, we're just going to go through the top 16 deck list from the UK Games Expo singles event this weekend. And also just talk about our experience overall. So I know most of you here are just going to be here for the deck list, but do stay. But we'll do the deck list first because, you know, we, we know that's, that's what you guys want. So... There you go. So uh, we will go through the first one here is top 16. It's Danny Allen. And he played Genember. Um, this is. There's one slight issue with this. I don't know if it's wrong or if it's an illegal deck list, but there's two fan drops in this deck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will Ooh. need to double check that one. <laughs> Um, but I, I'm pretty sure they they were actually in there. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> I got tech checked as well. No, first, yeah, first no, I, I, I didn't pick this up either, actually. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna check right now. <laughs> Just, this is a great way to start. Yeah, because I mean, what other Marseillans are there? I guess it could be. Uh, it could be Black Marseille. It could be Black Marseille. Oh. I'm pretty sure I saw the word mysterious in there, but um, yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at it now. I'm gonna try and make out from these people's handwriting. Yeah, although this this one was quite good actually. I think this one was but not that the one. The illegal deck was quite good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The one that I can't, I Let me it, see. God, Nathan, your handwriting. Okay, that's good. I will probably. Yeah, no, no it definitely does say Marseille the mysterious warrior too. EX0202. So, so, this, well, I, I think this I think this is um, uh, Dan Allen, but um, I'm not 100% sure because I didn't get the name on this particular list, but he was the only one who topped who didn't have this. There were, so. I spoke to the head judge and he did say there were quite a few of the deck lists, even in the top cut without names on them. Mm. Yeah, so, so this, I... this one was Lemon Demon, and yeah, this is the list. Um, I mean, yeah, clearly it is illegal. So, so uh, if we if we ignore we go. the Marseillean, if we ignore uh, the Marseillean, um, the Spirit Sword the is there. The Bab Bab yeah, is that's off. interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, but other than that, it's. Uh, should we move on to the next one? We'll just pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> I've made the list, I didn't even pick it up. I just... one, guys. We'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next list then. Okay, okay, so this is um, I Will Lock It. And uh, th this was an interesting list. I didn't expect to see this deck here. I did. Yeah, I do like this deck. Like the whole um, Freezer Emperor. Uh, resurrected Terror one. Mm. So uh, this is Dende, Yellow Dende. At, at first, when I saw Yellow Dende, I thought it was the um, well, the the Yellow Dende list with the hand control and and the crit freezer and all that. But and it is to some extent. It is, yeah. But this Just is it's toned down. Yeah, it's got all the um, it's got the seven drop engine. Yeah. Called engine, not the engine, but. But yeah, um, this is nice. I, I like this. It's got um, it's got the the Demigra in there as well. So I'm not sure how consistent the he was he was getting out the seven drop. Um, it's a lot easier now with uh, Tagama because it's putting yeah. bodies on the board. Uh, the thing I find quite interesting is only one dangerous journey bomber. Uh, I've played against the deck quite a bit. I've got a couple of people that I know that play it, and I feel with only one. The Janemba matchup becomes very difficult. Yeah, sure. Um, this, yeah, maybe he just dodged Janembas because it was only four rounds of Swiss. But I mean, I don't know. There were a lot of Janembas out there. So, was that? But yeah, this is interesting. This I, I like this one. Um, although I didn't expect to see something like this there, or something like this top actually. So, congratulations. Uh, anything else to add, guys? That's about it, really. Yeah, okay, great. Um, yeah, this this is spicy, I guess. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Philip Lee and his red yellow kid Goku. Wonder, wonder where this came from. And this, yep, <laughs> lo loading in. So I think um, 
I think Crossbow's TCG did a profile on this one like, earlier today. I think he did. it must have been this one. Uh, but yeah, uh, you guys play. You guys toyed with this build, didn't you? Before, yes. Yeah? So what 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 do you think of this? Yeah, loses to <laughs> Uh, it, it's a good build, but it has consistency problems. Uh, obviously, you have to charge yellow and red, which yeah can be temperamental at best. Yeah. Did you play against any of these things, Aaron? No, I didn't play. Yeah, fair enough. And neither did we. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't no. play Kid Kid twice in the first two rounds, but not with yellow. Okay. Oh, I would have killed to play Kid Kid. <laughs> And yeah. again, I think the red-yellow build had a lot more merit during the Super Shenron format. Yeah. But after the Arata, I feel blue is just superior in every way. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Blue is probably better. Yeah, blue did win, so... Yeah. I agree. Yeah, and uh, he, I mean, he's playing He's playing a lot of four ofs here, so you've got the... Well, he's playing four training, training body quill and... Is that, is that a bit too uh, much, do you think, or...? It's, that's a little too I, much for the I red think yellow build. any of them is too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, right, hey. He yeah. topped, so... Yeah, he did, so... There you go. Top 16. Uh, next top 16, this is Harry Briggs. And here's Sharon Gogeta. This is a blue-yellow build. So this is what took a win off of me. Yeah, yeah so what, what was that game like? Uh, it's unwinnable for Gogeta. <laughs> you need to rush out so much. They just they have Gogeta and they do it two times early, earlier than you do, or a yeah. turn earlier than you. So they do it on five. You usually do it around turn six. Yeah, essentially you need to win the dice roll and yeah. then draw perfectly. Get all your pieces, set up your blocker, and then hope that you draw off those three cards. Something decent. Yeah. He, he, he did. Put, he's playing the Super Dragon Ball uh, for scroll down here. So instead of a, instead of one star, he's going for the Super. Did yeah, that was a dig so hard against me. Yeah. And um, he he is only playing two seven drop actually. So I did ask him about this, and he he said he saw it enough. Really, so yeah. not really an issue. Um, what what did he play against? Did he, did he just do the seven drop or? Gogeta was the thing that mostly killed me, or just triple attack. Like, given anything triple attack and against a deck that doesn't really max out on the gates and relies on blockers that he can spin back. It, I think my last loss was against his Dragon Fist. Okay. Um, yeah. He really cracked think... Dragon Fist triple attack, and I was like, oh, cool, I lose. Well, <laughs> yeah, I played against the same guy the round before, and the second that you see Dragon Fist in the drop, you know it's essentially over. You can't put down your Veku. To ramp, yeah. it's just going to get bounced straight back, and yeah, he can just sit there and wait. He'll pretty much just go due to seven you, uh, world piece for free, bring up the Shemron, just wait, and yeah, that's that's the end of the match. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so, I mean, Dragon Fist then is really really good tech in here then. Uh, yeah. It's in the side, so he only sides one in, but well, one's all you need when you know yeah. you're playing Shemron, you're just digging for good deck. And even if you do give it triple attack, the auto isn't once per turn. Yeah, yeah, so it yeah no, it just keeps energy and Yeah. Well, that's crazy. Did you play against Shenron, Aaron? Because there were quite a few on the top tables. Yeah, I played it in the last round of Swiss, um, but a Victory Strike variant rather than Vegeta. Oh, okay. Oh, you played Shipley then? Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. And then uh, next up we have Elliot Lewis. With Vegeta Baby, so I think this was the only red deck in top 16, and this this probably was the best red deck to bring if you're going to bring a red deck, because Pan Pan was Pan wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> Day two, I think it was alright. Yeah. For this, not at all. Yep. So he's got uh yeah standard baby chain really. Um, he's playing three Saiyan Daughter Bulma. Um, not, not too much to add. It, it, it's pretty standard, isn't it? Uh, the Buller is yeah. different to usual, but it makes sense, I suppose. This gives you consistency. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And um, he's not playing any Zeno, so you, you. I think one of the advantages of Red Deck is Chain Zeno, but actually, Chain Zeno is just not really great right now. 
And just don't need it in this deck. You're putting down your big eight. You don't really want to be shuffling yeah. that way. Yeah, no. This this deck definitely is is very versatile, and I think it it can do well going forward as well. So. It does seem interesting though that he chooses to play a uh, fearless pan over a full line of for seeing hit in this deck. But yeah, um, depends on how it. many drops you get down, I guess. I mean, Fearless Banner is also a blocker, so maybe barrier blocker, so it's good against... Um... Actually, no, it's not good against Fixture Strike, is it? Because they've got high mastery. <laughs> yep. Um, and yeah, uh, three Chrono on the side. Not much else to say. This is the Vegeta Baby list, so this... Good, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, next up is Ian Dickinson with starter deck Broly. Uh, this was the only one in top 16 as well. Uh, playing four of the one drop and three of the of each Paragus as well. Uh, four four of the one drop seems a bit much, I think. Um, but yeah, I think we only need three. Though. Yeah, and uh, he's going for Golemite as well, which... What's your opinion on that, then? My opinion <laughs> on, on Golemite. I think Golemite's good, actually. I yeah, really I should, like it as well. should have played it. Um, the, he's playing three Bloodlust and three Freezer's Call. I'm not, I don't know if you want three Freezer's Call, really. Um, I'd probably go... I'd probably main, main Bad Ring in this. And, yeah, I agree uh, with that. Three, yeah, three yeah. bloodlust is. I think three bloodlust is correct actually because there's not too many things you want to lust right now. Yeah, I like having a lot of stuff on turn two. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, it, yeah, it's just a lot of four ofs. I think the Paragus line is a bit heavy. The one drop Paragus, the, the one that searches and untaps. Um, I personally don't think that's very good. Uh, but yeah, and uh, yeah, it's it's it, this seems to be quite light on the yellow. I just I just don't know how often you would have you would have that charged, or, and then you want to hold bloodlust as well, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Um, but then if it's not a thicker line, then there's no point in the question board to begin with. Yep, yeah, no, that that is true. That's true. You do need more, so you have targets. And. Yep, so he was the only one who made it in with this deck. Uh, didn't get past top 16 though. Um, so I, I think, yeah, the top 16 probably has a few more rogue-ish decks uh, due to how how many rounds of Swiss we had. And then moving beyond that would be sort of more of your established meta stuff. Uh, moving on, next is Brad Whitmore with uh, Sharon Gogeta again. Uh, this one, he's playing um, four fledging talent pan and three personal ambition, two bad ring as well. Not again, not too heavy on the yellow, even though he's got two bad ring here. Again, he's going to draw half his deck by turn three anyway. So yeah. yeah. So he's going to see one. <laughs> you charge. Yeah, you, I guess you only need one. You charge what one pan and then you hold yeah. a bad ring plus one yellow. Because you're gonna, you're pretty much gonna use your ambitions, aren't you? So, uh, so yeah, I mean, Shaman Gogeta is, is probably, is it the strongest it's ever been? I think so. I think no, that, that format was uh, like American. Nats yeah, but it did nothing, right? It came second, third. Mm -hmm. No, not second, third. Yeah, no, second, third. Or third and fourth. It, but it did pop. It, it okay. Yeah. There, there, I mean, there was a. There, there were there was a lot of chat about how seven drop Gogeta should be banned. <laughs> <laughs> or what? But at uh, this point, you just ban every card, I guess. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it does. I guess the seven drop does do a little bit too much with deflect and barrier as well. Just that as a card design, maybe it's not too great, but. But yeah, Shen Gogeta definitely in really strong position right now. Uh, we knew it was going to be making a bit of a comeback, but probably not to this extent. It's, 
just insanely consistent. You're gonna do what you want to do on turn four. Basically every single game. So if you're gonna take it to a five, six round tournament. Yep. It's reliable. Would you say the yellow blue is the correct way to go or go one? I think you need to play the yellow. But it's not exactly you don't have to make much of a sacrifice. Running personal ambition just makes sense, makes your deck smaller. You can sometimes swap out some of the uh, vanilla Gokus for the yellow ones. Yeah. It just makes sense to me. Yeah, uh, I, I do like this pull actually, to be honest. And then we move into, I think this is the last top 16. This is Jamie Wolf's uh, Gogeta Ramp. Uh, let's go, we'll go to Max first on this one because you you tested this the most probably. <laughs> yes. Um, In fact, Max and Anthony, you both played this deck, and Aaron, <laughs> yes, you did. played against this exact deck twice. Yeah, I played him twice. Yeah. Was it this particular player? I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Last round, this was yeah. Yeah. Oh. You see, in the list that I was building, it was made specifically to be able to handle Janemba. I can yeah. just see that this deck, this version of it, essentially has no chance of really beating it. Uh, we were maining two Fu and triple Dragon Fist, which are, along with Beerus, all cards which I don't know, give Janemba and actually something to think about. Here, uh, there's not really much pressure. The five drop Gogeta is kind of one of the main uh, attackers in this variant, and it's just milling yourself out two cards. Oh, he, he does have he does have two Dragon Fist here main, so. Yeah, but we, we want to get two of them out at the same time and just <laughs> drop a foo and watch Aaron cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the beerus, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the yeah. cards are there, definitely. I'm not too sure on the Kefla myself. No, definitely not. Not in a number format. Yeah, I mean, it, it draws you a couple of cards and it's a big beater, but it doesn't have doesn't have double strike or anything like that. And with the nature of the deck, there's a good chance that you're going to be uh, energying a lot of your big bombs. That food goes into energy. It's basically over in that match. Hence why we're remaining two and one on the side. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Aaron, what, what was your experience against this deck? So, I mean, going into the event, I, I thought the Gogeta matchup was a lot better for me than it actually was um so against jamie i drew in the swiss um that just went to time although i think i was pretty safe and would have had it with a bit more time and then in the top 16 again it went to time um, but i won that um just on the last turn yeah i spoke to him afterwards he said that it was probably the worst opponent he could have he could have come up against because you knew how that his particular deck played and how he played already so yeah i tested against Gogeta quite a lot um so when we played in the swiss in the first game for some reason i just played the matchup completely wrong i played way too slow um i didn't want to attack into Gogeta's and i was keeping my hand low because i was scared of Gogeta 7. i didn't want to attack into his Beku, so um so i lost that game basically because of that and then after that i played the matchup how i normally would just getting a bit aggressive um and then it worked from there on out, so... Yeah. But it was, it was scary. Um, yeah, it was a the, bit such a... The, the Berko and Oob got me. Um, oh, right, yeah. I remember what, watching the end of that when he when he hits you, and, and then he um, drops a TN right after that. I was like, oh, no, this is bad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I like him having... I see a lot of lists skimp down on the one drops as well, but they were like the big threat to the number. Um, I was sideboarding in the feature of Goku just to stop those from being able to attack me. Mm. Um, yeah, just recurring yeah, pressure. Get me, get me low, just keep attacking with those. That seems like the best thing to do against your number. Cool. Yeah, so the feature of Goku showing their off helps a lot. Again, I wish I played against such a number. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else to add, guys? No, I would have been interested in those matchups. Like, I'm honestly so interested to see what you play. Yeah, I'm sure EXT are going to upload the profile yeah. at some point. He wasn't allowed to give me a profile, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Uh, so, moving into... I think I think this is top 8. 
just gonna double check. Uh, this is uh, DVS Fix has been a bit slow, so it's yeah. This is Peter Dance. Uh, this is Top H and Ember. I actually have his profile, so it should be uploaded before this gets uploaded. Uh, so yeah, th this is the list. Uh, go watch that profile, and then <laughs> you'll get you'll get a bit more in depth than that. So we we'll skip over that now. Uh, next up is Nathan Hills. Uh, this is Kidku Blue, I believe, and this this is this isn't the same as the winning list. So um, yeah, this is the Kidku Blue list. Yeah. Three three working talent pan mained, and he's got he's got Gogeta in there as well, and uh, and the Shenron, which I thought was interesting. Let's see, uh, and only one one Whis and three power bursts seems a little light on the negates. Would you say? Um, mm. The main difference I'm seeing between those two lists is the Demigra in the main deck, uh, in the winning list. Yep. I think in the blue you can afford to run it in main, help us against a number if you see it. Yep, yep. I, I think I think you have to expect to see each number, to be honest. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is the list. Anything nothing too too pixel. I mean the Yeah, Shenron, I guess. Nice to have. Um Moving on to the next list. This is top eight Remco Luton's use of freezer. And uh, this list I think was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I well I mean there there are two of these. Uh, this is yeah. this is Remco's one. And and yeah, I think they, they both did the same thing where it's they split two backbone and two shagesh. I did. Did any of you guys play one of these decks? No, I, mean, I did not. I played against Oliver in the top. top eight. All right, yeah, you did. Yeah, I will guess we'll go that one. Get to you. I lost. Get to Oliver. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was unfortunate. Uh, Rem goes on is a bit different. He's got he's got the Grandpa Gohan and the uh, Two Drop Gohan as well, with. Four successor and four universe seven, so a lot of filter cards. Um, there's, it, it definitely, it, I don't know. It's to me, it seems a bit fragile early game. There's not unless you're on the, are you just going to negate everything I mean, with Roshi and time no, no, he's literally running four Roshi, four Nimbus, four, yeah. four time magic. <laughs> <laughs> you're not touching him. There is, there is a limited amount of. You know, amount of stuff you can keep up. I guess with this leader as well, you're just discarding and drawing two. Aren't you? Yeah, he's literally just gonna sit there, discard one, draw two every turn. And they just sit, sit there on twelve negates. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then Shigesh explosive if he needs it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. This is um. It's it's an interesting deck. It was uh. It was surprising to see it do so well actually. Even though I knew it was around doing the meta reports, I knew this this deck was kicking around somewhere. But um, for... and it's even doing well in America right now with the expansions and everything out. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's too so... bad you need a five hundred pound card for it. Or well, two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. But you know, if you if you have it, then you might as well play it. Hey, to win, guys. <laughs> I sold mine. He, um... Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so he's got... In, in the sideboard, he's got three death balls, which is, like, his extra defense. Uh, it was... On the day... On the morning, actually, that that's when it got eroded. Yeah. So, um... Hopefully no one... No one played it without knowing. Well, it still works for this reason. Yeah, it still works for this one, so it doesn't make a difference to this one. And he's got Goten in there as well. I guess in case his type of master, uh, path, sorry, path to greatness gets tapped for whatever reason, you can just use that extra combo to defend it. But yeah, um, pretty simple. Just defend like and then win. 
But I mean, it's good with this leader as well because this leader doesn't even need to attack, and it just gets That's the advantage. That's why I prefer it over the Broly, to be honest, because Broly, you're giving them cards, and this you're just sitting there yeah. drawing when you need. Mm. Yeah, good stuff. And then uh, we have last top eight and Aaron Doplings. Hey, what a legend. <laughs> Here is a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah so for, for some reason on the on Swiss you were called Aaron Doppling. But, but yeah, this <laughs> this is this is your list. Uh do you want to just run through it for us? Your card choices and stuff. Ooh. Yeah. I have a um, question. <laughs> okay. Why one Borgos? <laughs> so I on the list that I sort of built it from had three in and I did cut them all um, just to find space for other things mm. and then I had one slot left in the deck and I couldn't decide what to put in I was going an iron between another Janemba I wanted something for the mirror um, so I was up in my Janemba count and then I just wanted another just generic card and I just landed on a Borgos <laughs> no real reason behind it yep yeah. so um... just got the one put in yeah, you've got the Time of the Toe in there as well. What was that for, particularly? Um, so that was the tech that came out from America the week before. Um, the two uh, lists that did well there had it. Um, I kind of liked in theory. It's for Kid Koo. Um, so you can take their Kid Koos, which mm -hmm. did come up in my first round. Um, and then you can maybe take a two-drop as well. I think if I had to redo it, I'd... I'd make a few changes actually, and that would be one of them. It should probably just be another Supreme Kai time. She was really good. Yeah. And the Toa didn't come up very often. No. I think I only played it once or twice. Yep. So, apart from that, do you have any other changes you would make? Uh, I would take out a Demon Sword and probably put in another Agent. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I... think I played maybe one Demon Sword the entire day. You just I basically just always spin childish into agent. Mm. Mostly just for energy on tap. Yeah. And also it's the extra mill as well. Yeah, it does mill mill faster as well. I think just a a lot of players they're wary of demon swords, so they, they don't wanna leave a big big threat on the board. For, yeah, for most people do. Having agent because he warps whereas Demon Sword goes to the bottom, it makes your Saki Demons a little bit worse as well. Like, You want to save your Saki Demons for the late game after you've played a Childish mm. and you want to use a second effect to get the Childish back. If you've used a Demon Sword then that tucks underneath the Childish so you'll get a Demon Sword back instead. Um, so I preferred the Agent for that as well. Although okay. that's quite a niche interest. Yeah, yeah no, no. And uh, Godstrike Beerus, that, that came in... Did that come in much? No. It just in the very last round of Swiss on the on my opponent's last turn, last turn, um, it stopped the double strike lethal. Uh, but that was the only time it did anything yeah. all day. Okay, cool. And just looking at the side, there's two power overseeing time in there. Was, what what was the reasoning behind that? Because power overseeing time costs... for the mirror. Okay. Um. So in the mirror, because obviously, obviously they're milling you, so you you've got it fueled. The idea is that you just loop Trunks Power Over Scene Time into another Power Over Scene Time every turn. So every turn you're hitting them with a 20k double spot. Okay. Mm. Yeah, nice. Um, did, that, did that come in? Did you play any mirrors, actually? No, I didn't play any mirrors. Thankfully, because it's... <laughs> <Yeah. dead. laughs> and it's just whoever draws the most of numbers. I mean, I built my deck with that in mind, so a lot of lists were playing like two Childish. So I upped that to four, mostly because mm. I was expecting a lot of mirrors. Yeah, there was probably a bit less of a number in the field than I thought there was actually. But... I think the um, all the Janembas that did well played at least three childish. But... Yeah, yeah. I, think I mean, you need to play. I, I guess you need to play three minimum anyway. But... Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, moving into top four, this is Adam Evans with another Shenron Gogeta. This this was actually mono blue. So no yellow at all, and yeah. very streamlined. <laughs> that is very streamlined. Just just looking at it, it's 
it, it seems to be, if you theorize it, uh, this is what you're coming up with, isn't it? Yeah, um, I suppose I know the one star ball over a super Dragon Balls. Mm -hmm. It's become quite popular, I'm sure. But I suppose that worked out for him. He can go more hand controller route. Yeah, so, uh, yeah slightly more. Um, I remember just seeing him on stream. I think he he really liked getting two two Shenrons out, for uh, four drop Shenrons out. Um, mm. Get get that set up quite early, and then go off from there. But yeah, it, it just looks very streamlined. And the one I don't know, there's the one star. Yeah, the 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 one star is slightly. You can, you can get it back with radar, but you never really want to get Super Dragon Ball no. back with radar, do you? So. But Super Dragon Ball does just set you up for the whole game. It allows you to uh, double objection. Well, you it'll be a consistent double objection on turn three into the uh, free wish. Yeah. Next turn. I mean, I, I guess it it also leaves you. Does it leave you a bit more vulnerable? Or. Really but aggro what decks. aggro decks are then? <laughs> yeah, that's true. There aren't too many aggro decks. So you're looking at, I don't know, is, is baby aggro enough? On turn two? No, no, no probably not. <laughs> you're all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose that's why he's playing the Heavenly Wizard in the side. Yeah, for, I mean, it would just be Broly, wouldn't it? So. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, but yeah, that was a uh, very stream my list. Uh, moving on, I don't know who was third and fourth actually, so I don't know if Adam came third or if this guy, Olivia Hopkinson, came third. This was top in Swiss, so this mm -hmm. is the second use of reason list. I think Adam uh, came third. Oh, okay. Third place Matt on his trick plus. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, he's got the third place Matt, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so this, this one has, Aaron, you played against this one in top. Eight, yeah. four, top eight, top eight. Top eight, yeah. And uh, the, what I found interesting with this one is he's got the freezers in there as well, which I I I really like the freezer, but I just don't know if it's it it just feels a little bit clunky. But then he is only adding four cards in there, which he can discard with the leader to get a draw off. Yeah, I imagine they're mostly discard fodder, and then they're an out to. If your victory strike gets in the middle, I suppose. Yeah. That's another win. Yeah. So, what what was your experience against this deck? Uh, I mean, I knew the matchup against victory strike was my worst. Obviously, they just stole me on eight life. I don't get many cards, and then just tighten mastery into victory strike. Pretty much impossible to stop anyway. Um. So yeah, we played the first game. I got pretty lucky. I milled. I think all of his height and masteries. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he was having to try and just beat me down with like path to greatnesses and his thunder. Obviously, that's not going to get through to number. No. So I won that game. You could go second. into a uh, hope of the universe, seven, I guess. That's, I that's think he might beat. have done that. I think he did in his last turn. Um, yeah. I think I maybe just moved it or something. Okay. Uh, second game, he was on the play and he just killed me on turn four off from objection. Um, yeah, there was nothing I could do to that. And then the third game, he went for it again on his turn four on the draw. And yeah, I had four energy, which I didn't tap any past. He attacked, I dimension magic just to get the two on tap. Um, he comboed to 55, and all I had in hand was 55. Yeah. Oh, nice. so, in Janemba, all, all he had in hand was 55 with Janemba. So. Yeah, and I had about a 10 card <laughs> hand as well, which is annoying, but I was just sat on a lot of negates and Mephubas. Mm. Um, yeah, I just needed... My opening hand was really awkward. Um, I didn't really have any action at all. I think I just had a few pseudo combos and the negates. I think I might have mulliganed my entire hand. So my early turns, I was attacking and having to just combo with pseudo combos in my attack step so turn one i used one and turn two i used two um, and then if i'd have had just one single pseudo combo in that last turn i would have i would have been able to win yeah but i had to use them to dig through my deck aggressively yeah i mean i mean i guess 
it was it was a ballsy play to go in victory strike with only 55k yeah yeah because if i do combo out of that which i should more often than not and then if i just demon sword his victory strike then he's he's gonna struggle to kill me yeah um but yeah it got there yeah sometimes it just pays off yeah yeah and uh yeah so that was uh well that's fourth place and second place this is aston balkans um do you remember this i hopefully i can get a deck profile of him actually because i don't have the side deck it was written on a small bit of paper and the side deck was on the back which i couldn't see <laughs> oh, okay. um but this this is a this is a strange list um i was yeah. i was told this is a strange list because these were all the cards that he had <laughs> and, oh, okay. and then he shows up and he gets second at his first ever tournament oh, play. so um but yeah running through this, he's only got three um three unbreakables no cells <laughs> um four reality vendors and uh, he wanted to play more agent agent numbers but he only had two and uh yeah so 4d magic four weeks as well i guess you i guess you need to pad it out with something um but what yeah i mean most <laughs> of the key parts are in there i don't mind vegeta as well it's good against victory strike yeah um but it maybe saves you um the strivings i think are probably worthy of main deck now the towers i wasn't that impressed with her so but again it depends what cards you've got available yeah but but yeah, I mean this There's a lot of four ups, there's just a lot of four ups in there. Yeah. Uh four for me, four Borgus as well. It just definitely looks like he was padding it out with semi decent cards that he had yeah. access to. It looks like it'd be good for the mirror. It's got a lot of Janember. And that's all the mirror is. Whoever plays the most Janembers typically wins. But he's only got what, one extra Janember? Because he's got two AODs, so you're. Uh, he's got. Oh no! Well, he's got three more. He's got three more ben gym. reality vendors, yeah. And then two extra Saka demons. All oh, right. Okay. Right. So. Right. Sure. I see what you mean. Count those as well. Um. But but yeah. Um. This this was pretty impressive. This I mean this is what John told me. Uh. So, if if it is true then very impressive and I would definitely like to get a profile off you Aston if you're watching uh, so but yeah uh, and then going on to the top list this is Jason Barker's blue kid Koo. and yeah it's I guess yeah, I guess it is quite similar to Nathan Hills as well isn't it um, I'm sure yeah, yeah, they probably tested together quite a bit, and um, yeah, as you guys said, mon mono blue is probably the correct build right now. Yeah, going forward, it probably is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, they they've done a deck profile on this already on their channel. So I guess if you want more in-depth analysis, you can go to them. But yeah, just just to let you guys have all the lists because I do have access to that. Uh, yeah, if there are any questions, any sort of um, yeah, any questions on any particular list, then just drop it in the comments below, and I'm pretty sure I can get answers for most of them. Um, I'll, I'll just message the players and uh, yeah, get some responses. So uh, yeah, those are the lists. Just want to do a quick recap of the tournament for us as a team. Um, Aaron got top eight in singles. Um, Max and Anthony, you both went X one, and then yes, yeah. th th there were a lot of X ones. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. and then I I scrubbed out. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, that, yeah, yeah, but you know the the page you had for um, you took two photos of the teams and the single. Yeah. I wasn't even on the page. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, but, 
it was yeah i think after after day one it, i just i was i was just yeah quite dejected because of <laughs> my bad performance i think it was um if 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 you've watched my vlog you'll see a lot of videos <laughs> and stuff of, like before the event <laughs> and then there's like two, there's two during the event, and then it's just us eating food. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that was good. Yeah, well, what did you think of singles, Aaron? Because you were only there for that one day. Yeah, which, as has been documented now a few times, got off to a, a rough start. Um, but yeah, they, it built into the day, and it, it got a lot better as the day went on. Yeah, I think once once they started. Uh, well, after round two, I think, was it round two? The system crashed or something. Yeah. So they had to change. Uh, but I think... Yeah, there was all the confusion at the start and stuff as well, wasn't there? So. Yeah. And there was there was quite a big gap between Swiss and Top Cut, wasn't there? Yeah, there was a big gap. So we did... Yeah, so there was the announcement and then there was like a couple of photos and things, which maybe took, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And then they wanted to do a full deck. Uh, check for the top 16 so we had another 45 50 minute break um so yeah it was like way an hour and a half maybe before we sat down to play top 16. wow what what time did you get home or what time did I you leave got... uh i think i finished around 10 half nine ten wow i think i, I got back about around midnight yeah well, okay so good I mean, at least I, I guess it was a good thing you didn't get beyond top eight then. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because I wasn't staying over, so we'd have been driving back. Yeah. Well, I don't know what time they finished. Yeah. Late or early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it, it was really good to have, I think it was 121 players there. So... It was it was a shame it was just four rounds. If we had an extra nine people, then we would have I mean we would have had five rounds and would there would have been even more X ones. Actually, as you know, no, as you know, there would have been fewer X ones, but um, it still wouldn't have been good numbers. But hopefully that will change going forward. Uh, moving on to day two, which was teams. I I really enjoyed teams. It was really fun. It was a great format, and the five rounds that we had for teams were at, well, with the number of teams we had, yeah. actually were. Yeah, it was, what, 33 teams, something like that? Yeah. And we had five rounds, so that was that was great. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, and then uh, it was a top eight cut after that as well. Yeah. Although top 16 got prizes, extra prizes. Yeah. Um, which was... Just under fifty percent, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, so actually, yeah, if you got top fifty percent, you pretty much got top sixteen, right? Yeah. Pretty. Um, but yeah, we we played. We had a makeup of uh, Sunset Broly, Janemba, and Pan. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not. What? What? How did we get? How did we make the decision for me to be player A again? <laughs> so it was the fact that I had to be player two. So I could explain to you how to play Broly. <laughs> <laughs> and then mid round. <laughs> it was Oh, I think well, I think we, we didn't trust Pan to carry the team. <laughs> yeah, we didn't trust Pan and Tiebreaker, so we were just like, oh okay, Broly, you have the secret rare, if that helps. Where's the deck? Didn't get played. Play. Um I, I yeah, I did I've I've uploaded a deck profile for that one, so if you haven't seen it, just go check that out. But <laughs> it was yeah, I, we we could talk to each other, which really helped. But I just felt like in in the first round, I was staring at my cards and I was just like nudging Anthony. What do I charge? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Now sweep me so quick because she's like, okay, cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Charge that. <laughs> it was um yeah it was it was weird actually. I think I think it was around ten thirty when we decided I should play Broly, and I just picked up the cards and started reading them. <laughs> and prior to this we'd only just bought the deck as well so <laughs> yeah you, you bought you bought it on the friday at the event yeah <laughs> we, we went out to eat got back and decided what decks to play and i just had to learn a new deck 
uh, out it, it worked out well. I went, um, I won three and drew two in Swiss. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because you didn't catch any of the victory strikes. I caught every that, that single victory strike player. And they were all like a mini Cronulla. I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're like, how lucky is that for me? And I'm like, I'm still going to lose. <laughs> Um, I did play two mirror matches though. So. You beat both of them. Yes, I won both mirror matches. <laughs> it was. Um... What the fact you picked up the deck a couple of hours before the tournament? Yeah, the the to- the tournament was my was my learning period. Um, I was I was actually very very worried going into round four. I think it was when we went on stream, and I was like, oh no, I'm player one. I don't know how to play this deck. Because um, at that point, I had two draws and a win. And the win was against someone who, who wasn't very good. Uh, I think they were quite new to the game. So... Um, That's where you peaked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I literally, I, I, as soon as I knew I was going on stream, I just I, ma- I made a post on my Facebook. I was like, sorry for being a scrub, guys. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, no, it, it, it was good. I think that's actually when it clicked. If you If you go back and watch round four of teams you'll see that the first few turns in, in the first half of the first game I was taking forever to make decisions because uh, Anthony your your game was quite tight wasn't it so I didn't really want to disturb you too much and um, I was just staring at my cards like oh should I charge that should I play this or oh, do it do I combo and, and then... all I wanted to do was speak to you because my my game was over pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, and you're yeah you're not allowed to get up and speak yeah. to you yeah so. But but yeah, it worked out in the end. We did get top eight. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't we couldn't make it past um, the shadow cabinet. We lost to the team that we lost in round one. Yeah. I honestly think we should not play Pan on the team. Like that should be skillless. But that's for next time. Yeah. yeah I mean they you they can't play blue skillless. And yeah, I just don't think yellow skillless. Honestly. Yeah, that's true. They definitely had the correct makeup in teams. Yeah, of course, but we didn't have victory strikes in time. No, we did have victory. Yeah, we did did have have a victory victory strike. strike. Well, we did, but we hadn't. We didn't have a deck. Yeah, we did have. We got them on the Saturday. All right. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. You got them the morning of. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But yeah, definitely. Looking back, the the correct decks were uh, yellow body victory strike, Janemba, and Skillless. So I, and that that was what won as well, I think. Mm. So yeah, although you know you can smash green broly in there, and yeah, that that does pretty well. So we're going to talk about how the event was running, general. Yeah, uh, teams teams was yes, the day two was a lot smoother. So I think uh, I I'll, I'll be doing a podcast with the judges uh, just to get their view on it, but. Yeah, I think day one they they didn't have much support at all, and then they had to deal with the whole head judge thing. Yeah. Um, but so I feel day two they were just told run it the way you want. Yeah. If you need this number of rounds, just do it. Yeah. Apparently, someone just went up to them and said, "Just give the players what they want." Yeah. I think I'm still a little disappointed with the amount of rounds in day one, but I think the judges did really well. As someone who's run an event before, you, they definitely needed an admin team to do a lot of the work that they were forced to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so they were doing all the registrations. They were doing all the deck checks. Um, well, I mean, they have to do deck checks anyway. But they, yeah, they were they were putting the table numbers out. Yeah, they they were literally they were running the tournament and judging the tournament at the same time. And there were only three judges. Yeah, well. there were only three of them what because. Happened? I don't know. Why did they lose two? I'm not sure why they lost two. Did they lose two? I thought they only lost one. Yeah, no, they uh, they told me they lost two. So maybe one person didn't show up or something. Yeah. And then another... No, another one was... Um, kicked, removed. Kicked, removed. <laughs> removed. Um, 
for, for those who don't know what happened, if you're still here and you're from the States, then you guys are the MVPs. Um, but basically, the, the original head judge uh, was someone who had a very bad reputation within the community. Um, he was... Um, I, I mean, I don't have the details, but everyone else seems to. Um, that he, he scammed he scammed someone else. Oh, I mean, this allegedly. Allegedly, it's he so scammed. Alleged. So, <laughs> he's, like he's also been banned from his locals. Yep, he's been banned from his locals. and Apparently, he's just, not, he's just, just not a very nice person in general. Um, I've never spoken to him, though. So I cannot attest to that. Only I only have hearsay evidence. Well, overall, I think the deck was uh, the deck. Sorry, yeah. the event went really well. Uh, props to the judges, definitely for what they did. Uh, I'm gonna forget. I forgot one of their names. Craig, Steve, and oh, you remember the first names? Yeah. <laughs> Don't remember Craig's surname. I think O'Brien. Oh, oh, it is. Okay, cool. Okay. They all they all did such a good job. And also, thank you to all the people that helped out from. Uh, the other card game tournament that randomly just showed up and decided they wanted to help. Oh, really? What, what happened with that? Uh, yeah. some, some of the people doing deck check. No, remember when we had a better deck check? Oh, yeah. Uh, from Warhammer. Yeah, yeah, they were from the Warhammer game. They just didn't. They just came up to help because we needed it. Oh, nice. Oh, I didn't know about that. that was, that's really cool. And also, thank you to the you know, LPG. For running the stream. <laughs> For running yep. the stream. Um, Big thanks. Thanks to Luke, John, and Peter. Yep. Especially Luke. That is the only time Luke's ever going to get thanks from me, but... <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, one, one of the things that oh, um, we are looking to do as a team is to get more members. So, not really sure how to go about that yet. So, we're going to be sending out applications, and then uh, once we pass the maybe, first maybe, application... Maybe we'll do a tournament. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think we should just make players fight to the death. Fight to the death. Yeah. Who, whoever sends us a victory strike, you you get into the team. <laughs> uh, no, no, yeah, we'll we'll think of something and then we'll make an announcement because there there will be uh, more larger events coming up. And we need more people. This is a game of attrition, people. We we do need more people if we want to compete with EXT. Then. Um, and there are two tournaments pretty soonish right in june august the two yes the lpg, LPG tournament events in london they're coming up um but yeah just have more people to test with to bounce ideas off it definitely helps yeah. uh so yeah that's that's pretty much us um thank you for watching slash listening anything else to add guys nope no no aaron all okay. good <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Has he gone? Has he left us? I, th I think he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, Aaron. No, Aaron. <laughs> no, no. All right. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Hopefully, see you guys at the next tournament. Uh, it's been. It was really good. It was actually. It was. I really enjoyed just seeing everyone there. Even though I scrubbed out on the Friday, I was disappointed by the result. It was good. Just. Um, just catching up with everyone and uh, chatting with people as well so um yeah and that's it i will have some podcasts coming up i'm planning on doing one with judges and then with some of the european players as well to get different perspectives i will also be contacting uh, bandai just about the future of the game and hopefully we'll have updates from that at some point so yeah that that's it um, I guess I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.